This is Talk Radio across the UK, online, on DAB+, and on the Talk Radio app. Evenings with Kevin O'Sullivan on Talk Radio. Uh, time now uh, to talk to the head of uh, the Young Voices UK organisation, Jason Reid. Uh, good evening, Jason. Good evening, Kevin. Good to be back with you again. Uh, good to have you on the show. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about uh, the coronavirus rules. Uh, uh, the Emergency Act is going to be continued uh, uh, by common consent in the Commons fairly soon. Uh, but before we get to that, uh, Greta Mania. I wonder what you thought of the new all-singing, all-dancing doom goblin, Greta Thunberg, who's over there in... Uh, uh, in uh, Stockholm, in uh, Sweden, uh, singing uh, I'm Never Gonna Give You Up by uh, Rick Astley. I think we were hoping to get you a little section of that, but I don't know if you've seen it, but it's quite a sight. Uh, what do you think she's playing at? I have seen the clip. I wish I hadn't. I mean, it's really, it's up there with the most cringeworthy clips you'll ever see. We've got plenty of them from recent history to choose from. There's Theresa May dancing on stage and uh, James Corden twerking in the street to promote Cinderella, Boris Johnson mowing down that child during a rugby game. But I think this clip of Greta might be up there as the most cringeworthy of the lot. She's up there on stage for some reason wearing a big thick jumper and tracksuits and a coat on stage and supposedly dancing her body moves in a completely random timing, certainly not in time to the music. Uh, the, the crowd are shrieking. That's the strangest thing about it. The crowd shrieking and screaming as if she's some big star. You'd think she's Beyonce or something going by their reaction. It's just this weird cultish mm. atmosphere that, that seems to surround her at the moment. She hardly ever went to school. Now she's not doing a job. I mean, you know, this is a, a girl who's just sort of sustained by rabbiting on about climate change blah 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 uh why doesn't she go out and get some gainful employment uh people say oh, it's nice to see her smiling for once it's never nice to see greta thunberg i wish she could just leave the stage i would have thought she'd have a lot of catching up to do for all that school she missed when she was sat outside the swedish parliament and sat outside in all sorts in all streets all over the world um at various points ultimately it's, it's relatively normal behaviour for a teenage girl. You can you can give her the benefit of the doubt. The part that I find really weird is the audience reaction. Yeah. It's this cultishness yes. that surrounds her. It takes groupthink to a whole new level. Not only do we all think the same way, now we all feel the same way. And we're part of this exclusive community. And here's our hallowed leader. It's just very, very odd. Yes, I was just, we were just watching it there on Talk uh, Radio TV and uh, you're right, they're uh, enraptured by uh, the presence of uh, the Doom Goblin, aren't they? Uh, but uh, I don't suppose we'll ever shut her up. Uh, she is going to burden us for the rest of her life, I'm afraid. Uh, let's talk about something uh, probably more concerning than Greta Thunberg. Uh, the government uh, is going to uh, debate the coronavirus act in other words the emergency powers will be continued uh the prime minister today in a speech uh, ominously said uh, the covid crisis has proved that we must listen to the scientists we must listen to the science usually when he says things like that it's uh, the prelude to some sort of lockdown or more restrictions on our freedom uh, you know, he says we must listen to the scientists, but of course that's uh, unless those scientists are from the Joint Committee on Vaccination and Immunisation and they're advising against vaccinating children. At that point, uh, the Prime Minister chooses not to listen to the scientists, uh, but to go ahead and vaccinate children anyway. So he's not particularly consistent on all this, uh, but it is quite worrying and ominous uh, that they're making all the wrong noises as we approach uh, winter. I, I hate to bring some pessimism to your show, Kevin, but I'm very, very pessimistic about the prospect of Christmas now. I've been having any kind of freedom uh, over the winter holidays. I, I'm sure that Boris Johnson will come out over the next few weeks, just like he did last year, and say, oh, we're having a big push to save Christmas. And then, of course, it, it won't materialise. We can see it already. We're going to have another socially distanced Christmas as Granny sat at the bottom of the garden and an elaborate series of levers to get her Christmas dinner to her. I feel like I'm going insane. Am I the only one who remembers what it was like last year? Why are we going back to that? Are we going to go back to a time where it was genuinely unclear whether or not it's legal to sit on a park bench and have a coffee and when people were being arrested yeah. for walking in the countryside? 
with a friend, why are we going back there? It doesn't make any sense. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, what seems to be now on the agenda year after year, uh, well, they set the precedent last year. You know, the idea that the government, uh, that its primary job is to look after our health and in pursuit of that uh, heady aim, uh, they'll lock us down, they'll take away our freedoms, they'll make us stand two metres away from each other. Uh, that uh, became acceptable. And uh, to the government, uh, it looks like they're set to do it again. Uh, what worries me is this idea that it is the government's job to be our doctor. It's not. It's my job to look after my health, not the government's. And yet it's taken this on board and it assumes that uh, in pursuit of keeping the nation healthy, keeping the nation free from various viruses, it is allowed to do virtually anything to us. Yeah, we've talked about this before, Kevin, a very worrying precedent that's being set by this pandemic uh, that could stretch into the future that the government can roll back our freedoms at will in order to uh, do things that are in our own interests, as it would tell us. Um, if we can't have a normal Christmas this year, that means we can't have a normal Christmas ever again. Because last year, when people were talking about how necessary and vital these restrictions were, the argument that was always made is we need to get out of the other side of the pandemic. Well, we are out of the other side of the pandemic, so now's the time to go back to normal. But of course, at the root of the issue is that the people in government making these rules they don't care. Matt, Matt Hancock knows that he can shut his office door and do what he likes. Dominic Cummings can go on his cross-country expeditions and Neil Ferguson can have his extramarital romps and Boris and Carrie can have their friends over for Christmas. They know the rules don't apply to them and so they don't care about you and me having our Christmas ruined. Yeah, you're right. Uh, while uh, you, me and everybody else were unable to see our friends or our loved ones, uh, Boris and Carrie worked out a way of getting around the rules. I don't think they break the rule, broke the rules, uh, but they certainly didn't obey the spirit of the, the rules and they had a, uh, Carrie's best chum over uh, for the festivities, uh, which I think is a very, very bad look. Uh, but it's typical, typical. You've got Dominic Cummings, Matt Hancock. Uh, they make all these rules, love to inflict these rules on us, don't particularly like like obeying them themselves. Exactly right. Yeah, and this is the problem when you have government interfering in this way. You always find that the law does not apply equally the people at the top of the chain. It turns out there are all kinds of exceptions that we didn't know about and that there are exempt. If you need to test your eyesight, you're allowed to drive a car to the nearby tourist attraction. <laughs> to the nearest castle. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, it's crazy, but uh, fingers crossed we'll have a free winter. Uh, but as you say, uh, the, the portents and the signs are ominous. The same noises. We must follow the science. Unless it's the JCVA saying something we don't want them to say, then we won't follow the science. Uh, it's uh, one rule for them and another for the rest of us, Jason. Great to talk. Let's do it again next week. Jason Reed there from the head of well he's the head of the young voices uk organization very fine organization that is too